<laughs> Experience has taught me that perhaps I should start this video with a disclaimer, but I'm gonna keep this disclaimer short. I'm probably gonna ruffle some feathers, not intentionally and not because anything I have to say is really controversial, but because our choices are not typical in the homeschool world and things have changed and a lot more will continue to change. Welcome back friends if you're brand new to my channel my name is Arlene with Arlene and Company. This is end of year reflections and you're thinking to yourself Arlene what can you have possibly say that is gonna ruffle some feathers absolutely nothing but I know I know the online community a few years into it this channel may be new but I am mm -hmm. not new. in your own little island just making you a lot of hate I never understood that because I'm here in my happy medium and I'm here like I can just be a cheerleader regardless of what path you opt to take for your family. Why? Because it's your family, your home, your school. So whatever choices that had you arrive to this point are your choices, your path, your visions. So I never understood how other people can come into someone they see highlight reels of and say, you're doing it wrong. But I learned that very early on that people will continue to say that to you. And it probably, it saddens me, it will never change. I don't think my it will change. Elongated, um, disclaimer. I am going to go over resources. There's not going to be that much of hit or misses because you guys, my friends, like after a certain amount of year, you hit your groove, right? You know what like works, what jams. Sometimes that stops working. That's okay. That throws a curveball and you know, something else happens. But for the most part, we don't have a lot of misses this year. So what could possibly be changing, Arlene, if you don't have any misses? Well, we're entering middle school range, right? And actually, a little bit of a sneak preview, we're already in it. So um, we are year-round homeschoolers. We technically usually pick a date. That is our July 1st because that is we're registered under the district, um, the school district. Um, and, you know, not like an umbrella or anything like that, but that's who we report to. And they switch over the grades on uh, July 1st. And so that's the day that we pick. Not that you have to, like, report a grade or anything like that. Um, so we do a moving up day and that's also something like, oh, you do grades. We do grades. Okay. We do grades. Um, especially with my youngest, we started him this school year with a hybrid third, fourth grade type of thing. Um, really quickly. This is going to be a chatty video. You guys, I'm going to have props. I'm going to have stuff that I'm going to show you. I'm going to like demonstrate. I'm going to like, you know, yeah, we're going to keep it interesting, but this is going to be a chatty thing. So grab your drink, have a snap, or whatever you need to do. It's going to be chatty. Uh, when I first pulled him, we basically, you know, Richard, not because academic wise or because um, he wasn't capable of doing the material. He was more than capable. Actually, he was bored. Um, my kiddos are actually too yee. I do not talk about this often. Uh, we talked about other neurodiversities and things like that and actually not really anymore. Um, I have my own personal reasons really for that. really excels in like things like language arts and stuff like that. You know, he has like a, a addiction to words and vocabulary and things and writing and, and he could just like spit out a paper just because and type up his little um, heart's desire. But maturity wise, he was just not there. He was not there to handle the workload of um, that next grade. So I decided to like just a do over. We were gonna do a do over and we kept them in the same grade. What happened, that was the right decision then. But what happened as the years moved forward is that the material really wasn't matching to where he was academically. Um, maturity, it finally kind of like his maturity and developmentally where he was met where he was academically. So um, I would say maybe a couple years for 2021, 2022, uh, we decided, okay, you're fourth grader, right? You're fourth grader. Uh, and that's what we did because none of his materials were third grade, not a single one of them. So it was just like a thing. And why is this important? My kiddos feel it's important. They came from a traditional school settings. They still have friends that go to um, public schools or private schools or whatever not. They have these type of conversations. They like to know what grade they're in. So it is important to them. 
respective. It's not important to you. It's cool. Um, so anyway, so that is one of the bigger change, which I like briefly mentioned in some of our update videos over on Instagram that we did as a collab for, um, with project happy home, uh, beaches and reads the hip home life and renegade homeschool. You can check those out over on my Instagram page. I'll put the captions changed down. Changed a lot of what we did during the school year. So I had in for uh, Blossom and Root and Oak Meadow uh, with Blossom and Root taking like the front seat for language arts, literature and all that jazz um, and taking all that as the front seat and then um, Oak Meadow like uh, filling in. Um, what we decided was, if you're not aware, I also um, work with Christina, the creator of Blossom and Root. Level six was not going to be available as quickly as um, some would have hoped. Um, so it, there's a whole process and you can find that link in my link tree um, as well of the update uh, of a letter explaining how the there is going to con continue if you have kiddos in our younger ages and using Blossom and Root, there is going to continue to be higher levels all the way through high school. It's just gonna have a different timeline and there's no ETA at this time for it. So what we did was, is I was still having him do some level four stuff and just kind of finishing off. We had ended up combining them in level four in the years previous with that. So I kind of aged him out too. And then, um, as we were doing certain things, he was really more in that level five range. So we were combining with the Blossom and Root in level five for both of them. So at the moment, it felt right. It felt like the right decision to try to combine them with the, um, certain things, although they were doing their own separate grammar and their own separate additional uh, writing and things like that. It felt right. <laughs> and then what I realized is like, well, shit, I just <laughs> aged out both of my kiddos from Blossom and Root. And for the language arts portion, we can rotate through the sciences and all that stuff and, and, and be great. So as I was looking for the year forward, I'm like, okay, what are we going to do? So for my daughter, transitions are a little bit harder for her. So what I did is I shifted instead of Blossom and Root level five being her core, um, I made Oak Meadow more of a center stage and then had... Um, Blossom and Root literature be more of the literature component and um, doing that portion. Now, of course, the science is ha was a heavy hitter and it was one of our main portions of with the science and the history from Blossom and Root. But I'm talking language arts now. Yeah, if, if I missed that. We're talking yeah, language arts. more um, as her core. And the reason for that is that I wanted to her to really get used to back um, to that format from Oak Meadow, the work expectancy of Oak Meadow, and more of that traditional flavor that Oak Meadow has. Because even though is a holistic inspired curricula that has that Waldorf flair in it, which some will like purists will argue oh, it has less all Waldorf. It's okay. It has enough for me. Um, anyways, it does have more of those traditional flares throughout with a holistic um, to get used to that format. So Oak Meadow took a center started doing more of the level five from Blossom and Root. We are not done yet with level five, Blossom and Root. And I slow down purposefully, um, especially after we, you know, like level six is not coming this summer. Like usually she was releasing one every single um, year and like, you know, she's been like energize the burning going, going. I love her. Um, and she's just been going and going. Um, so we, we have slowed down so I can th take it through the summer, maybe even a little bit through the fall. But that had me drawing like right back at square one. And I don't know about you, you guys. I love Oak Meadow. Love it. Love it. So the natural um, thing for you guys may be like, okay, well, you're just going to put your son in Oak Meadow grade five for next year. And um, just, you know, like Bella will be like Oak Meadow six or whatever not. I don't know. Mad props to public schools and pirate school teachers, classroom teachers. I don't know how you teach the same material over and over again, back to back. Like that just sounded like a painful idea to me. <laughs> like seriously painful, like, oh my goodness. Like, no, I don't want to do this. Um, so we just did Oak Meadow grade five, right? And we're like wrapping that up. And I'm thinking, can I, he sat in on a lot of it. Like, you know, it just happens. Even if they have their individual subjects, it happens that they kind of sit in. Like if um, she was doing her individual science, we have a very science heavy home, just so you know. We're a very science heavy home. Um, so we have our family subject science, which is Blossom and Root. And we did level five this year, um, portions of it. And we were still finishing level four human anatomy because I'm a nurse and I was gonna spend my sweet time on with it. And I was 
quite all right with that. That was fun. Um, so we still have um, another portion of level five science that we can use next year with both. But they also have their individual sciences. You're like, how does that work? I'll explain in another video. If you want to, if you want to. Um, anyway, so we did that. We did not do exploring the states that comes in level five this year. I had intended to do that, but we had done that like the year have in my back burner that we may or may not do next year. I don't know. You'll have to find out in my curricula choice video, which will come next month. Um, we continue on with the nine profiles in art from Blossom and Root. I absolutely adore this. Um, it's, it's great. And we've gone through it very, very slowly such as as well as the tasty geographies we're still doing tasty geographies from level four we've taken our sweet time because with cultural studies we add things like tussle and biscuits culture studies we have like our letters from afar we have our charm posts we have um miss macy's like you know with the um, recipes and we take our sweet time with like each individual um, country and culture studies and things like that. So um, I I have like all those things that can flow over, but it's gonna look a lot different. I, it's the gonna main, like the main lesson part, the language arts, literature, grammar, and all that stuff. That's where we were like, oh, what do we do? So my daughter, for my expectations, we were like, okay, well, I, you know, and I just showed the first part of Oak Meadow grade six. I love Oak Meadow. Um, and that was just basically, um, I thought she was set. <laughs> Oh, lo and behold. All right, so like very quickly for math. Let me just mention math because, you know, we're there. Um, my daughter did um, teaching textbook at the very beginning of the year. If you remember back summer, she was, um, again, our um, trial period. During the summer, because we school year round, I use that time so I can explore different options and explore a different rhythm. If it doesn't work, then it doesn't move forward into the fall semester. So in essence, it's not that we have a lighter summer or that we have a less academic summer, is that we play around with things in the summer. Whereas during the year, I really like to stick to what we have and really give it a good college try. Like it has to be totally bombing for us to switch. Teaching textbooks is something I really do adore, I love, and um, my son um, uses as well. For her and for her processing things and the way she processes information, um, she did really well with the lessons. She did really well with understanding it. She did really well, um, you know, with with the work. However, the online platform itself would cause some issues, right? Um, and it was just basically, it's not anything to do with the teaching textbook. It was just, you know, how she processes information. So even when I would block certain lessons so she wouldn't accidentally um, um, skip or she would accidentally do certain things, um, you know, thinking she did one lesson, but she did it actually another day. It was really hard for her to track. And I know that sounds kind of confusing because it does, everything is set up so beautifully with it. Um, and it has really like neurodiverse kiddos in mind but for her it was just like I was seeing so many things that were triggers and that were like stopping our days to a halt and then rewriting like we could have continued because she really enjoyed teaching sex books she actually cried when I said you know what I really do think we need to try something else and she really enjoyed it she saw her brother doing it she liked the bonus round she liked all the things she really enjoyed it however I just kept seeing how it wasn't exactly a perfect fit for her. Um, so we already had Oak Meadow math. We had done Oak Meadow math like in the younger grades and this is a, a portion of Oak Meadow that we really only use like a, as a supplement here and there. But then we switched over completely to Oak Meadow math and it is a no frills, no nonsense. I have the reviews of grade five over um, on Instagram. You'll find the page guide that says Oak Meadow. I will have grade six review coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, for you so you can see how it works. It's no frills. It's no, it's just like how you learn math. <laughs> okay. The, it, it, it's not going to be like for everyone. The cover is almost completely off and I needed to make it to the very end. So let me open to a page that she has not completed because, um, 
I do not specifically show her work unless um, I'm given the okay to do so. Um, anyways, so just a quick glance because I have these uh, uh, reviews already on this. Uh, it just has a very plain page, no colors, no nothing, no distraction, especially with, like your ADHD kiddos or things like that is very good for that. Um, and then even then you don't have, you can break it up in however way you like, you know, you can do six problems today, six problems, whatever. And and even with that, you're, uh, she was always able, even with only doing a few problems a day to finish with in the week um so that was very successful for her and i just had like this moment like Aww. you know and the skies open and i was just like and i'm not to say it's perfect because there are still moments that she like will break down or whatever and i think that's normal for any kid and especially when it comes to the subject of math um so anyways that has proven to be absolutely fantastic. I don't see any changes coming with that, but I'm not gonna spoil our curricular choices for you. I'm not gonna preview and tell you, it's probably not gonna change. <laughs> Um, my son has done teaching textbooks that has worked really well for him um he has moments again just like anything else that he's just like hits a wall and he's like i don't understand what he's saying and then he just replays it and then we go over it or whatever or not uh, and we just had a conversation and he was just like okay uh yeah I, and this is another year that he's going to continue on so he'll continue on with um oak Me uh, not oak meadow with teaching textbook my daughter had also done the um science from oak meadow uh apart from the blossom and root science and this is not even even, I'm not even counting all these other little resources and add-ins that right. we do. Eclectic as freak. So anyways, um, this has been super fun. This has been, I love to add an interdisciplinary approach um, science because since we do the blossom and root which is very focused on two specific topics for the whole year um, in the higher grades I like to have the interdisciplinary science which has a mixture for throughout the year it doesn't mean that we have to do absolutely everything for both um, curriculus because we don't but it is a great mixture and just um, here I go this is the part where people get pissed off all right so since the beginning we have always made this decision to homeschool. It was a first, a temporary decision. We had decided to pull our kiddos due to X, Y, and Z's. That's another story, that's another video, and I don't even know if I would make that video. We um, had decided to pull our kiddos, and before um, this became a possibility, my husband and I had a really deep conversation about it and what our goals would be and um, what was important to him as well, because this is a team effort, right? The, um, even though I'm the one that's doing primarily 99% of the lessons, this is a team effort, this was a team decision, and what is important to him is that they were on a college track. What we mean by that is not that we are shoving it down their throat and you must attend college and there's no other choices, no, but we wanna make sure that that option is viable for them and that it, we are laying down the ground for a college opportunities and to enter that type of academic world, which means that we are going to, whether we start it more gentle and more eclectic and even using Waldorf inspired um, curricula, Brave Writer Lifestyle, Blossom Root, all these things that are generally like gentle, they are very easy to work around and to add to it, subtract, take away, and make it your own. So this is one of the things that I'm really excited about, the resources that we've um, always used and the ones that have come to us um, later on because it was very easy and flexible for us to make our own and to add our own academicals to it. It doesn't mean that it's anything wrong with doing it as is. You can be a complete unschooler. I will never understand unschooling. I will tell, say that a thousand times over. I will never understand unschooling. I think it's beautiful what I see and what I witness and what things that are getting accomplished by unschoolers. I think it's awesome. But for me, I'll never get it. I'll never understand it. And my type A personality will never go down that route. I think it's awesome and I will celebrate you. But the minute I say, hey, we are an academic academic track and we are preparing our kiddos to enter college <sighs> what are you doing you're ruining their childhood you are not really a homeschooler anyway so that comes up very often and i'm gonna tell you i'm at the stage in our whole little blogger world in scenario which i just don't stand for it this is my boundaries you can say something nasty or something that i just don't like i'm gonna delete it and block your ass that's just it, <laughs> okay? That's where I expect max as it is when I say things like that because it always happens. Un unfortunately, that's our experience. But that is our goal, right? We are not only molding the whole child and helping them see the world as best as we can and educating the whole child and preparing them for life, life skills, life schooling, 
just experiencing life itself in the most enriching way that we can, but we also want to prepare them for the expectations of the academic world of higher learning. What I mean by that, that if I feel that, okay, we're using this resource, but I really want something a little bit more structured or something that looks and mimics a more traditional um, look to it. So I know that they grasp that and that they can answer it in this format, even though that's not my preferred format. I prefer to show you a uh, brave writer arrow and discuss it. And I find so much value and so much fruit in it, but I don't believe in all or nothing. You know, you can be so many things and so many different people all at once and it's okay. <laughs> and you can change your mind 27 freaking times and it's still okay. So we are on a college track, right? So I want to make sure that if something happens, knock on wood and we are unable to continue to hold school all through high school which is now our plan it's no longer a temporary decision we determined that two weeks into homeschool that yeah we're gonna be doing this for a little long we're run prepared with materials that they would see in a traditional public school or a private school whatever option that we would be faced with if that came up if that came up i don't know I don't know, but it was important to us that we prepare our kiddos for that. So that way, um, I truly enjoy, I prefer a focus uh, approach to science. I love seeing um, a deep dive to oceanography, uh, a deep dive to astronomy. I, I love doing those things, but I also love weaving in a curricula or a resource intermittently or throughout the year where they're seeing the connection between disciplines throughout the year. So Oak Meadow provided us with that. I'm gonna have some different things that I'm also gonna be adding. In middle school, things are going to change and I will use the word that will scare folks away. I have found textbooks that I absolutely adore. I think they're fabulous. I used to use textbooks when we first started. I have, there's never been a secret, never been a secret. I used free resources that I found because I didn't want to buy anything until I was sure of what their style was, of what their learning um, style was, where they were, and how I was able to teach them. So I didn't want to do something like, something I admire, like Right Start Mathematics. I think it's a fabulous program. Can I teach it? Absolutely not. I hate the thing. I threw it across the freaking door. I recommend it a hundred times over because I think it's fabulous, just not for me. I can't teach that. <laughs> just can't do it. <laughs> no. All right. That's another story. I talked about that in that review. I'm very honest. We use free it. resources. I use core knowledge. I use all kinds of things until we determine what we like. And then we started adding um, curricula here and there. Here's the problem. We're secular homeschoolers. Our options back when we started, even just a few years ago, it was just like like this, right? So I went up to like McGraw Hill and I looked up for like used textbook. I had like free um, PDFs of their social studies thing. Now, obviously you guys know I teach um, history through diverse verses and everything um, else. I, I want an inclusive history. However, I see nothing wrong with adding things that I can enhance on and go there and, and just like, you know, like a, a social studies one where we're just doing geography and whatever not. We can work with that. We can work with that, honestly. Um, but for the main part was that that was where I would like pull those type of traditional resources or core knowledge or all that jazz. And actually one of the things I never really like, I know a lot of folks like the what to teach, I don't know, it was like a, it's a homeschool book of what to teach every year. I can't remember the name of right now. I, I didn't like it. I read like the first chapter and I was like, yeah, bump this up, not me. Uh, but more power to you if it is. This one made a little bit more sense. This one is like a really old edition, like an old law library copy. Um, and for this is what your sixth grader needs to know because I always have one for like the next year. I also, Wait for it. I'm all about pissing people off on this video for some reason. I don't know why. I mean, I'm just going to let it all out because this is a new platform, my friends. And if you missed it in over like four years of having my other place, um, somehow, I'm going to just let it all out from the beginning. Again, just so you know. Um, and there is no misunderstanding where I stand. So I go ahead and go into our state um, 
Florida Education website and I print the state standards. And I have explained this a thousand and one times. It always pisses off people and it always makes people uh, misread what I'm saying. I don't use this as a benchmark of what I need to teach or to frame my choices or what curricula I use. I use this as the reference point. I like to know what other kiddos are learning in that grade. Again, I never know what's gonna happen. Our plans are to continue to homeschool all through way through high school. But if something life changing would change, I want to know what other kids are learning and have we covered this? And um, if it's something that I find of importance and we have not, I'm going to find a resource that I can edit in a way that I feel fits our family. Um, if it's something that I'd say that, well, that's complete BS, I'm going to skip it. Simple as that. But I am going to have that and I have it inside right here in my Aaron Condren planner <laughs> and one of the sleeve and I have it there. I have it for each grade and it's in the sleeve and I review it about three, four times a year just to look at it and see. And you can see I have check marks of things that I have viewed that we have um, mastered or in process or going into middle school my son as well okay so i say middle school and you're thinking oh you only have one middle schooler actually i kind of have two uh my son is going into fifth grade remember there were two e and his strength is in certain things so some of his materials are going to be sixth grade some are going to be fifth grade so we're going to start again with the hybrid title of fifth sixth grade uh again we'll cut whatever we'll call him fifth, whatever but um there is going to be a mixture my daughter's straight on now when um we pulled my daughter she was a grade ahead where she was supposed to be but she only missed her grade um her her deadline to enter school kindergarten by three days um, and they made an exception so she was always obviously the youngest kid there and because of all the struggles that we went through um, when we pulled her I put her back to where the public school would have had her but had she continued in the same track she would actually be going into seventh grade so all some of her some materials are like seventh grade materials so um, you know it, it's it, we are in middle school <laughs> <laughs> Let's just put that out there. Um, I'll give you a preview of some of the things that I have found um, for next year, uh, which is like actually right now because we're doing it already. Um, some of it we're doing already. Um, my son is. Um, this is a textbook. It was not from McGraw Hill. It's from um, HM at, um, H Harcourt um, one. And this is Journeys. I had to, before I showed this, I had to make sure that, cause I had to find the used copies, unless you uh, have a, like a teacher license or something and, and be able to ship it to a school, you really can't buy it directly from them. So I had to go through thrift books and um, also Rainbow Resources have some of the portions of it. I have not gotten the teacher um, guides for it, but I think it's gonna be okay. Um, language arts is my strength. I will be showing a flip through and review of this. I will be going through all the components. This is not the only piece, but this is massive. This is a textbook that includes like all the elements of language arts i am super excited about this i have been researching this like crazy for over a month and um this is the fifth grade one for my son um and i will give you a preview my daughter i thought i was set she saw this and she's like i want it <laughs> and let me explain why here goes another reflection of what has worked so we've always been a literature-based homeschoolers right um, it is in my, I mean, come on, it's our court. It, it's who we are, but they're also at that stage where, um, I can't read everything to them. I can't read everything to it. Everything cannot be a read aloud. I work from home. I have a, my work hours that I do certain things, but then there's things that come up throughout the day. Um, I have other things going on. Um, and I deal with chronic health issues too. So there's some days that I have backup materials and those are the things that I do quickly that I can get done a quicker or more independent form. Because of all those things, I really took that in consideration as I was looking at next year, um, as in like right now. <laughs> because if I continue on the path of every core that we use to be literature based, I was just gonna slowly fry myself in the oven on high broil all day long. I could not keep up the pace anymore, especially in middle school. And giving my children, okay, this is your required book, which is an important skill for them to gain and know that sometimes you're going to read things that are not fun, that are not something of interest to you, and that's okay. 
not to say that the literature that is part of any of our curricula is like, you know, it's just some things are not gonna fit. I mean, how many books that you were required to read, which people rave about, you're just like, eh? you know? So that's my kiddos too. So with everything that we do being literature-based, it's starting to be a problem. Or, you know, it started to be decided is that our English language arts main components will not be literature based. Now, this does have source text from literature in it, but you do not have to read the whole book to do the assignment. And there's where the, the main thing lies. Will Blossom Root, Oak Meadow, Build Your Library, Brave Writer, and all that stuff be in the mix? You betcha. And you will see in our curricular choices how everything is going to fit together and why it may sound to you like that's an eclectic crazy mix of stuff if you've been around me any amount of time you know that we mix we blend and we make our own perfect little curricula for us um but when my daughter saw and i was just like oh there's a source text it takes you to the genre to go over the, the whole story i don't I, I i'm gonna do a whole complete thing on it because this is not just one piece on it um, she saw the format. It's very colorful. Um, it's like broken up into pieces. She's like, well, why can't I do that too? And I'm like, at the moment, part of me, like my Waldorf-y teacher vibes that lust to be like everything literature and glorious. And, you know, that vibe of me was just like, because... <laughs> You know, we don't do it. One of those moments that I reflected back and said, well, this is where we started. And then we started seeing things that others were doing and we're like, well, that looks great. That looks great. That looks awesome. Okay, well, I love that idea. It's enriching, it's great. And there's nothing wrong with it. I'm never here ever to tell you that the way you do things is wrong or to do it my way. I'm just telling you, this is our season. This is what's gonna work. For us now, now they can throw a, a curveball at me and build up. We to streamline our choices, our cores that requires a literature to be used to be able to do the work. And in doing that, that freezes up, especially for my kiddos' strength, like my daughters in science and arts, and my daughter and my son. He like I want him to fall in love with reading. He's a great reader, great and all that stuff. And I will explain a lot of why I think this is gonna be a great fit. He's always had issues with um, comprehension um, type of questions, which is not something that's really encouraged in a lot of the programs that we use. Like, it's not about comprehension, but you're always like doing that Charlie Mason approach where you're doing a narration and they're pointing out things that they found important to them. But then I also, again, this is why it was important for me to state that we're on a college track and stuff, is that in certain test formats, if they're still required for whatever college they want to go into to take uh, uh, SATs, ACTs, whatever it may be, they're gonna have to be able to answer those traditional type of questions that homeschoolers hate. I mean, I get it, I totally get it, but I want to prepare them for that type of stuff. And I find that this is a great balance of the things that I love from literature-based curricula with um, a traditional approach that prepares them for that other stuff. And I will give you a preview. I think a lot of the stuff in this fifth grade book, had I seen it before, I probably would have gotten in grade six. Um, I don't think this is behind. I just think that because of how we've done things, he's just a little ahead of the curve. Um, and that's it. You know, we started with IEW as well at the beginning of the year my, um, in the summer. And this was, I will recommend it a thousand times over. You guys know I even became an affiliate for them because I was like, this is magic. It's magic, you know, and you want to get your kiddos to that traditional type of writing and it's not just like creative or that free form or narration and stuff like that. It was magic. However, um, after a while, after like a, a couple semesters into it, it, she was just done. Like, can I just write like something else? So Oak Battle writing really, really works for her. Um, but that's not exactly how we're going to do next year. You got to stick around for that. Um, but she went from, and I, I do have, like, I'm gonna, just going to glance really quick this much. Like from writing that much to like full pages um, and full two page reports now. And, and that was very like, you know, being able to shift things was very important. 
um, realization that I had as a, a home educator. Um, you, we get our mindset and stuck on like, this is what I want to use and this is the methodology that I want to uh, subscribe to, which has never been me because that's just me. But I understand folks that feel that way, that this is where I am at and then my child is shifting. Like, you know, I could have very easily made her finish the whole entire IEW because I think it's fantastic and it did fantastic things for her writing. But she felt that, okay, I got it. I, I got the concept and she knows that if I feel like her writing is suffering um, and she's not really grasping that, that this is always on the table. Um, and I still recommend it. I still recommend it. We have all things fun um, and, and fascinating that my son used and he used quite a bit of it. Um, he's just, it was not his cup of tea. Again, something I still recommend and I really like it. If you ask me if your kiddo is up on that age that they can do either or, I would say this one. Um, this is like built in all in one um, where I find a little bit trickier. I don't know, for me personally, it was just a little, this was easier to teach than this one even though this is like very scripted. It's, I don't know, it's just a personal preference thing, but this is still great. Uh, my son did not continue to do this. So um, we did quite a bit of it though. And IEW, um, again, uh, took a back seat um, for, in exchange for Oak Meadow and my son in exchange for Brave Rider um, and Arrows and stuff like that. So we done all that. I have so many things in front of me. I just wanted to also quickly tell you like, Bella's major hit um, this year. One of our main goals is was re reading fluency. She's mildly dyslexic and all that jazz. Uh, my son has his um, strength and some areas that he needs to work on. Her thing was like her reading the, uh, and writing and things like that. So obviously you saw some of her progression with her writing, which um, mama tears, y'all. Mama tears, this was years in the making. This does not happen overnight. But she, when we first pulled her out, she could barely read, um, you know, a sentence. Um, she could barely read a sentence. It was a long, it was a long road, you guys. It was a long, long road. Um, this is book. Ah, maybe I'll edit this out. Um. This was book, this is book 11 of Wings of Fire. Look how thick these are. <laughs> She's almost done. She just requested for me to request um, book 12 from the library. And she did that. She read it on her own. And uh, so we have a reader. Whew. Let me compose myself. <laughs> that I really want to hone in in these middle school years um, to getting our done there's certain subjects that we we want to make sure that they grasp and understand and they are able to build upon it and to become stronger um you know uh writers readers and things and critical thinkers and stuff but we also don't want it to take to up. take up a big chunk of our time and eat up at the time for things that they really want to delve into like my daughter could build a robot from scratch or whatever if she had that allotted amount of time and stuff and we have been working into making sure like my daughter has a free period where she can choose what she wants to do and she's been working on animation and stuff like that um, and she's self-taught um, and um, uh, stop motion my son has been working on um, and there's just different things not I'm not saying that these um, beautiful programs that Amazing Souls have, have written lack value or lack um, rigor or whatever it may be. It's just that we are streamlining our homeschool approach so we can really dive into the interests that we're seeing now and what they probably potentially are going to grow into in high school and hopefully college. And yes, I said hopefully college because our hope is that they will attend higher education. If they choose differently, I, we fully support that too. But as two college oh, graduates so um, in different professions, this is something that has been important for our family to set the stage and, um, for. I wrote something like and on a note, I was trying to stay on track and I don't think I did a very good job of that. But I hope that if you still cook up with me, that um, you share with me 
your journey this year, your reflections. Um, this may not have been what you expected or that I was just gonna pop here with a whole bunch of stuff and, and just say, this is great, this is not, or whatever, which there's a lot of value in that. Hey, I looked at tons of that to try to see what can we do differently in middle school, um, what options we have, and actually been helping a lot of families that have been with um, our Blossom and Root families for so long, and they're like, what do we do now? And we've been navigating together and there's so many amazing resources that I do re recommend for our personal journey. We're going to shift our path a little bit more traditional. Right. This mom <laughs> needs to have a better time management with all my commitments and um, this will help. I really feel like it will help and if it doesn't, we'll reevaluate. But I wrote, all choices are valid regardless of what they may be, regardless of how far-fetched it may look for other people, regardless of the recognition that you may receive or the judgment that you will encounter. All choices are valid because they are your choices. Our convictions do not shape the decisions of others, only your own. We are not echo chambers and to surround ourselves with those that only view things the way we view it or make decisions the way we do, it is a disservice to our children. Surround ourselves with diversity and teach inclusivity. So in end, that is my end of year recap a little sneak preview of what's to come. I will go over what we're doing in the summer in a future video and um, curricula choices and um, curricula reviews of the textbooks that I found and that I'm really excited to use and to dive deep and see if this is something that would work for us because it did at the beginning. We just veered off to what felt right then and what worked right then. And now we're different people and that's okay too. So I hope that this year you're able to find your reflection in your own voice and drown out the noise. If you are a fellow misfit homeschooler like we are and you don't fit the mold, there's a place for you here. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'll see you guys next time.